second part of Mimeo training where we're going to focus more on the tools available through your Mimeo Studios software. Now again, if your tools aren't already up over any part of your screen, you can always open it by either clicking down here twice by double clicking, which will bring up your tools. You can again click the number one button right here on your pen. You can go to tools and open your tools. Or you can even press the launch button on your screen to bring on your Mimeo Teach to bring up your options to open your tools. So I zoomed in. Let me go back to full zoom. Our first option, our first tool that we have over here is the selection tool. That's how I can select things on my screen. If I don't have that selected, it will not select things for me. For example, if I am drawing on here with the pen and then I want to select it, I cannot select it unless I choose my selector tool. Now I can select everything that I have. Now let's say I want to delete this. I can just select it and hit delete. I can hit the red X down here or I can even drag it down into the recycle bin. Or there's even the undo button and redo button over here. So if I completely undo everything, it'll get rid of it. <clears throat> The next option, if you notice, is our magnifying glass. Our magnifying glass has this tiny little arrow in the bottom right corner. What that means is, is that there are more options under this tool. So two ways to open those more options is to either click and hold, which is the most convenient to use at the whiteboard with the pen, or you can right click. Either or will bring up your more tools. You have zoom in, zoom out, full zoom under here. So obviously it kind of speaks for itself. Zoom in is going to zoom in. You just click exactly where you want to zoom in and it will go there. And full zoom will just take you back to where you originally were. If you notice on the bottom of your screen, now these particular tools over down here that I have on your toolbar will probably at the, be at the top. There are ways you can move it around. I put it at the bottom because it's the easiest spot on the board for most of us to touch. And I have a board that's a little bit higher than everyone else's on the certain wall that I have. So having these options on the bottom is a lot easier than for me to stretch my arms up all the way to the top of the board. The only issue I have with these particular zoom in and zoom out buttons down here is you cannot center the zoom. They are centered Whatever is on the center of that screen is where it's going to go. So I need to use the scroll bars to move to whatever I want to zoom in on. So for example, I keep zooming in. Now that's my new center and it can zoom in on the Mimeo Hub dock or whatever you want to zoom in on. The full zoom option down here, this zoom full is probably more convenient than doing it through here because all you have to do is click it and it goes back to normal. Now, the main reason I use this in my classroom is if I have something on the board, you guys can all read this right now on your videos pretty easily. It, you can see all the tools, all the options that go with the Mimeo Teach. But if I had this on my projector and on my whiteboard in my classroom, this font is kind of small. So the back of the room might not be able to see this font. So I could always zoom in to show them. Now, we also have the pen, which I kind of demonstrated a little bit ago. We have anywhere from being that thick all the way down to in the middle, which is, that's about the middle, which is about that thick, which that's almost about what I use on a daily basis, all the way down to super thin, which is like that, which is, again, very hard to see if you're in the back of the classroom. I usually try to keep it two clicks in when I'm teaching in my classroom. That's about my, my standard for finding how thick it should be, about two units over. So once you click on this and start dragging it over, it's about two. You'll see it jump twice. That's about where I use it. And again, we have more options. You can see the arrow. So if you click and hold or right click on this, we have a brush as well, which I'm not very fond of, but you might be. So give it a whirl. I'm going to change the color of this. I can change the color of the brush. I can change the color of the pen. I can pretty much change the color of everything. Anytime you see these colors available, you can change the color of whatever you are using. For example, this is an eraser. Erasers don't typically have colors, so if you see me select the eraser, those colors are gone and that's not an option for that particular tool. But since I have a brush, obviously we can change the colors of the brush. So this is what the brush will look like versus the pen. So notice it's more of a rectangular shape versus a rounded shape and it's angled. And you notice it thins out too as you cut out an angle. So I'm not particularly a big fan of the brush, but some people are. And 
that's really up to you. Now I'm just undoing. You can either undo by hitting the undo button over here or the hold control and hit Z on your keyboard and that will do anything that you have just done. No matter what program you're in, even if you're in Word and you want to undo something, if you hold control and hit Z, that is the same thing as the undo button. Next we have, I'm going to fix this real quick, next we have text tools, which is if you want to write something on the screen using your keyboard, you can do that. Now there's a way you can use an on-screen keyboard, which are going to be in tools that we'll talk about later, but I'm just going to do a for an example. Now notice my font is really big and this particular color, that's because I had already changed the settings to be like that. In order to do that, if you select whatever you want to change the font of, you have all those options just like you would in the Word program right up top here. This last one is for the color. You can align the center. So basically if I wanted it to be the center of this screen, I would probably well, there's too much stuff on the screen. Let's move, for example, to a new screen. So creating a new screen is just one button. It's this button right here. It's called New Page. Now, remember, your yours is going to be at the top of the screen unless you have already moved this to the bottom. So I'm going to click on New Screen. But notice, for example, didn't come with it. So over here, we have my two pages. I am going to select, for example. Now, I am going to right-click and copy or I'm going to right click and cut. The difference between copy and cut is copy does a duplicate while cut will cut it out of this screen and then I can paste it onto this screen with the paste button. So let's say I wanted to center this at the top of the screen. Well I try to align it so it's perfectly lined up at the top and the left and I can just stretch it all the way out to the end and now that it is almost about there, well, that's good enough for me. I can now select this and align center and now I know that that is in the center of my screen. So I usually keep things to the left so I'm just going to keep it to the left. So that's how we adjust the font and the size and style of everything that you would like to do. We also have bulleting. There's a lot of different options with that particular formatting. So. Next tool on the list we have is the highlighter and it kind of speaks for itself. Now as ironic as it is, my favorite color to highlight with happens to be black because on my board up front, for some reason, black really sticks out and is a great highlighter. It doesn't come out pitch black, it's like a gray and it's transparent so that you can still see the words and not have to worry about covering it up completely. The kids can see it. Sometimes the yellow doesn't always shine very brightly on our boards. But as long as you click and hold and don't pick up your mouse, it'll stay one consistent color. The second you pick up your mouse and then start highlighting again, and then you click again, if you keep clicking, it'll keep getting darker and darker and darker. So make sure if you just want to highlight something, it's just quite easier if you just click and hold and don't let go until you finish highlighting that particular section that you're highlighting. Now this one, of course, is taking a while because this is a very large font. Again, you can also change the thickness of your highlighter as well. So if you don't want it to be as thick or if you want to underline it with a highlighter, you have that option. Next on our list, we have the one that looks like a rectangle. Now this kind of speaks for itself. You can draw a rectangle on your screen. Notice I have a dotted line. This square dotted line can be changed to whatever you want, but in order to do so, you first have to select it. It is not selected right now. So using my selection tool, I can select that box. And right down here underneath of your colors, we have this little box that's line style. We have three different line styles. We have the square dot, which it's on right now. We have the dash line that looks like this. And we also oops, select have the solid line. So whichever you like to use, you can adjust the size of this box also by using these corners. So there I have my box around for example. Now let's say I wanted to cover up for example and I wanted to reveal it later. I want to put fill in this box. So let's fill the box. In order to do so when I select the box, I have a couple different options. 
Notice this color red was the border of the box. And again, I can change the thickness of that border with this slider. But if you click this other box that's behind my red, that is the fill box. So whatever you have for the fill, you select into this box. So when I click on this box, let's say I want to fill it with white to match the background. Now we just have this red box. If I want to have this up on the screen and I want to hide something, I could always move my box or there's a ton of different things you can do. I can even add an animation to where the box would either disappear or things like that by doing a right click on the box. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you notice it says animate. I can just have that there and I can make it fade out. When the object is clicked is kind of key for this particular thing because I wouldn't necessarily want it to happen when I enter the page, which is our other option if I'm trying to hide it to begin with. Let's say, for example, you have a bunch of different problems up there. You're doing either your bell ringer or your lesson check. You can have the answers covered up but still there. That way, when everyone gets all of their answers, you can have the boxes and you know you can click on it to reveal the answer. So another thing that's not so nice about it is you notice it just put a blue border around there. That blue border can go away. In order to make it go away, I need to lock this in position. So for example, let's move this out of the way. Let's say I want to draw on this before I finish off with my box. And I forget to click on my pencil or pen or whatever you're drawing with. And I have the selection tool selected. If I start drawing on this, I start moving stuff out of the way. Now, depending on what you're moving out of the way, it might confuse the kids. So make sure you're selecting the right thing. But if I know for a fact that I don't want any of this stuff right here to move from where it's currently located, I can lock it into position by selecting it, whatever I want to lock, right-clicking on it, and locking it into position. Once I do that, it's not going to move. It's going to stay there. I can click on it all I want. Notice it's still selecting stuff, but it's not moving. It's staying there. That's what I did on my first slide to make all of this stuff stay still. I locked it into position. Now you can always unlock it, but you cannot unlock one thing at a time. Whatever is on this particular page, you have to unlock all at once. Now one thing else to notice is, let's say I, I want to move this whole thing, and I want it all grouped together. I don't want to move just one part at a time. I could either select it all and move it together like this, or I can make it one object by right-clicking and grouping it. So if I right-click and go down to grouping, there's a group option. If I do that, it groups it all into one object. So now it's all one object, and I don't have to worry about that. If you change your mind down the road and don't want it to be one object, you can just go back ahead and right-click again and go back down to grouping and ungroup the object itself. So that's a bunch of different options that you have. Now let's lock it back into place so it doesn't go anywhere when I click on it. I'm going to move this back up. And there it is. Notice my fill disappeared for some reason, so I am going to refill this. Oh, my fill did not disappear. My box is now behind my for example. Uh-oh. I don't want it to be behind my for example. I want it to be in front of my for example. So in order to make this box in front of my for example, I need to right click on it. This happens to me all the time. You don't want something on top of something else or you do want something on top of something else. How do I change the order on what is on top of what? Well, to do that, you select your object and right click on that object. And right down below grouping, there's an option that says order. I want this to be in front of for example, so I'm going to move the order of this to the front. That way when I cover up, for example, it is completely covered. And now it's gone. In order to make this blue ring go away, which will be on top of everything that you either animate or anything along those lines, you need to right click and lock that into position and that border goes away. Now remember, this red border was something I created myself. It wasn't part of any of the options that we did. It was something I created myself. So if I want to show my answer or whatever's behind the box, with the animation we created, now I just have to click on it just like a PowerPoint would be. And that's kind of nice now. It won't move out of the way. It's locked in position, and we're good to go. 
The next tool on my list that I want to talk about is the highlighter. I'm sorry, not the highlighter, the rectangle. We talked about the rectangle, but if you notice, we did not talk about, hey, there's more options here. So when I click and hold, I have a bunch of other shapes that I can choose from. You can play around with these shapes, anything from ellipses, which we can make ellipses, circles with. We have triangles, which this particular one makes either isosceles or, or equilateral triangles. This particular one, we can make a right triangle. Now, lines is very convenient because we can just have a solid line. We can add a line with an arrow on it or a line with two arrows on both ends. This is very convenient for my classroom being a geometry teacher. It's very convenient to be able to make a line. Now, let's make that back to a solid line that I like. You can make it however you want. You can make it dotted, dashed, solid, whatever you want to do with your lines you can create. Now remember, if you don't want those to move anywhere, you have to lock them into place. If you don't mind these moving around or you're planning on deleting them at some point, then I wouldn't worry about locking them. But again, it's easy to unlock things and lock things. So if I want to delete those, I could select them and remember, hit my red X, drag it to the recycle bin, or I can hit the delete button on my keyboard. If you're at the board, obviously you're not going to use your keyboard. You're going to either drag it to the recycle bin or hit the red X. So, one of my favorite tools under this shape option is shape recognition. And I am currently at my computer, so I'm going to go up real quick and write on my board to show you what it would look like if I tried to draw a circle. Now, I'm going to draw an ugly looking circle and we're going to see if it can recognize it or not. So I'm going to just make a little zigzag circle a little bit and hopefully... Nope, it didn't recognize it. So it's got to be at least semi-decent. you got to have semi-form of a circle. And it recognized that it was at least an ellipse. Depending on how good your circle is, you can make ellipses all day. Now notice I didn't come close enough to closing it off. That's another issue you might have with the shape recognition. So if I wanted to draw like a rectangle of some sorts, it will recognize my rectangle. And again, you'll notice I'm on the dashed lines. That's because I haven't set my line to solid. I can do that if I want to. It's all up to you. Now, the only other difference is when you create these, whatever lines you might be going over that you want it to be perfect for, it might change. Like, for example, let's say I wanted to go straight down on this line. It might not go straight down on that line because of that little gap that I made going over. So it went over a little bit. If I am now using my selection tool, because there's way too much on my screen going on for me to keep going, I'm just going to delete some stuff. I'm going to make that all disappear. Now I want to show you one thing that you can do. Like if I want to move something around the screen, and there you go, a circle. That was a terrible circle, but it left it there for me. If I use my selection tool and select it, I can either drag this around, or I can even use my keyboard to move it around the screen. Now, if I'm making a lesson and I'm trying to put something in the top corner and I, for some reason, can't get the mouse to so just leave it there and I'm like one away, I'll just use my keyboard and hit the over button. It'll move it there for me. So the next thing we have is our eraser tool. Now, the eraser tool only erases the pen, the brush, and the highlighter. For example, if I had another shape up here, some sort of ellipse going on, I can't erase that with my eraser. The only thing that erases, again, is the pen and the highlighter. So let's get the eraser, and we can erase all of that. But for some reason, we cannot erase figures. If you want the figure to go away, selection tool, and either drag it to the recycling bin, or hit your red X, or something along those lines. Now, this next tool we're going to talk about is probably one of my very favorite tools. The first part, not so much, but the second part of it, yes. If you click on this, it's the insert button. You can either insert a file or a screen clipping. A screen clipping is probably my favorite option that we have, but I'm going to do insert a file first. So when I click on insert a file, It brings up my folders on my computer, and I'm just going to quickly go and find something that... It doesn't take PDFs. For some reason, PDFs cannot be uploaded, but if you have... 
any sort of Word document or maybe I haven't tried an Excel sheet, but I'm sure that'll work. Most of the things that come along with Microsoft Office will upload onto here. As you see, I have my EOC formula sheet that they get, I believe, for this year. This is a document. Now, obviously, the text you can see now, but remember, you got to think about how it would look in your classroom. My students would not be able to read this from my board. So depending on what you're trying to upload onto here will determine on whether you can do so or not for them to be able to see it. Now notice when I did that, it created a new page for that item as well, which is which is great. Now, if I don't want this page here anymore, I can select the page on the column over here and either hit the delete button on my keyboard or again, the red X will delete it as well. Next, I want to talk about the screen clipping tool, my favorite tool. Let's say, for example, we are doing a project for history and we're talking about George Washington. So let's look up George Washington. And I want to add a picture. I can find a good picture of George Washington. This is a pretty good one. I can either right click on the picture and I can copy the image. And then when I go back to my Mimeo screen, I can paste it. Notice it's really big. I'm going to have to do some size adjusting here. So let's adjust the size of this picture down so I can fit it onto my screen. And there it fits onto my screen. But let's say I didn't want all of George Washington. Let's say I just wanted his face. Well, if I just want George Washington's face on here and not his whole picture, that's where the screen clipping tool comes in. If I just want something on that screen, whether it's a picture, whether it's a homework problem, this is what I find very useful because my homework in my class comes straight off of the internet. We have a program called Math Excel for School. Now with that program, they can also print off their homeworks and do whatever they need, but the screen clipping option is great because if they are all struggling with the same problem, I can screen clip that question and make it part of my instruction or bell ringer for the next day, which is very useful. So in this case, I just want George Washington's face, but the op or the um, the options with this are pretty limitless. So screen clipping, it brings up the next page where my Google Images was, and now I can just select George Washington's face. And it pops into my Mimeo slide, and there's his face. I can make it as big or small as I want to. Now I'm going to get rid of this drawing, just for an example. Now I'm going to put him in the top corner, and I want this to take up my entire screen, but notice when I drag it down, it maintains the same shape and size, and I cannot fill in the rest of this screen over here. Well, there is another way I can deal with that. The way I deal with that is, if I right-click, there's an option for fixed aspect ratio, and if you notice, it is selected. If I unselect it, the aspect ratio, now I can make it wider or anything that I want. The only issue with George Washington is he's probably not going to appreciate a distorted face, but if you're working with a math problem, it's not going to make too much of a difference. So another option I'm going to do is I'm currently going to change the order of this. We talked about this already. I'm going to send it to the back. So now that my for example is in the front, that's highlighted. Now let's say I don't want George Washington to be quite this vibrant. Let's say I want to make it more like a watermark versus a darkened picture. So I want to be able to write across this and still have him in the background as a watermark. That's where this option right here comes in handy. It's the transparency tool. I can change the transparency. Now I figure with pictures like this, if you want a watermark, I think 75% is pretty good. Some people might use 90, but I feel 75 works best for me. If I select 75, you can still see George Washington. He's a watermark now. I'm going to lock him into place, and now he is permanently there for me to draw on or move stuff around on for whatever I want to do. And I still have my four example options here. So, next thing I'm going to talk about with transparency again is I can't, it's not just pictures that I can adjust the transparency of. If I have the pen, if I have a shape, I can adjust the transparency of all of those tools that we've already talked about. Now the issue is, if I'm going to make a pen transparent, I would strongly suggest just use the highlighter to begin with, because the highlighter is already like a transparent pen. 
So I kind of find them counterproductive to make a pen transparent, but that's really up to you again. So we have a few more tools down below here. I'm not going to talk about these in this particular video, but in the next section of this video, you will be learning about these couple different options down here along with a few more things.